Hey guys, James with Jetty USA Esprit Tech, and today we're going to talk about Sequencer. We get a lot of requests on how to set it up. Uh, we're not going to get too in depth in it, but I will give you a good idea of how it operates. We'll give you an example. Uh, we're using a board that we created uh, with a couple of electric retracts and a servo. The servo is going to represent the gear door, and the retracts obviously are going to represent the gear. Uh, I've set that up on a sequence on a single switch so that when I operate that switch, the gear door will open, the gear will come up, and then the gear door will close. The reverse of that sequence, of course, is the door reopening, the gear coming back down, and then that door closing again. It's a pretty simple sequence to set up. There's a little bit of work in doing so, and of course that's three sequences or three cues to do that. So I'm going to go ahead, go into the menu, into advanced properties, and go ahead and go down to sequencer and I'll give you an idea of what it took to set that up. Uh, like I say, there were three sequences and you use function buttons one and two to navigate between those. So the first uh, cue that you see on there, the first portion of the sequence is the gear door itself. Uh, so we've put in a couple of time points, uh, one at zero seconds, of course, uh, one at uh, for about four and a half seconds and one at right around six seconds at different values. That allows that door to open, stay open, and then closed. Um, if we go into the advanced portion of that, you'll see kind of the trick to it um, in any of these operations is making that path asymmetrical because you, you really don't want uh, it to go out and then back. You can do it that way, but it takes a little more forethought. I use an asymmetrical setup uh, so that the timing on the gears doesn't throw off the door and I create an individual sequence out and I create an individual sequence going back for each of the three sequences. Uh, of course, I set that up for the channel that I want to write it to. And of course, once you flip that switch, it'll run through that. One of the things I always do um, that I haven't done here is always set it up to always finish sequence. That way everything goes through completely, even if you were to cycle that switch. I'm not a big fan of it going halfway. A lot of times timing can get off, something can happen. So let it go through that sequence each time that you hit that switch. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out of that. If I scroll down to the next sequence, of course, that's gear number one. And the sequence after that is gear number two. Now if I flip that switch, you'll see that that sequence changes to another sequence, which allows us to have that operation of the gears uh, in the correct order with the door so that we don't have any interference. Um, with our gear setup, because of the way we mounted on the board, we actually have two different sequences between gear two and gear three. Uh, gear three is the one we're looking at, or gear two is the one we're looking at, which is Q3. Gear one, you'll see, has a little longer period before it actually goes to the retract position uh, so that you'll see that uh, spacing between the two that allowed my gear to not collide as they were closing. Uh, if you want to set up a sequence, it's pretty simple. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go down, navigate down to the next open sequence. We're going to go ahead and set one up to give you an idea how to do it. The first thing you want to do, or things that you need to know, is your 3D button, your 3D wheel, is what actually controls uh, movement uh, both in your selections at the bottom and on the actual graph itself. So we're going to go ahead and select our first time interval. So you select it and turn the wheel left or right to move up or down your graph for time. So we're going to go ahead and put our first point in at zero. So once you have the time selected that you like, you hit the plus sign that adds a point in the graph. The value of the graph is at the far right of that field and it shows it at negative 100%. If you want to change the starting point of that particular item, uh, just go ahead and deselect the time, scroll over to value, and click on it. Uh, if you're just taking it from negative 100 to positive 100, one of the little tricks that you can use is by double-clicking the menu button while it's highlighted. That'll allow you to move in 100 degree in increments, so you can move very quickly through the menu. That works through all of our menus, by the way. It's a nice little tip. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set that beginning value at 100%. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and create our next time interval. So we scroll back to time. Let's say we're going to use three seconds as our next time interval. 
we want to hit the plus sign. That'll create a point on the graph at three seconds. Now, of course, we can give that whatever value we like. I'm going to go ahead and give that a zero value, or in, in our case, 50% value. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit the menu button once so that it moves by tens. And I'm going to scroll down to our, let's see, let's go zero point there. It's a nice point to put it at. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is assign that a switch. So you can do that by highlighting the switch portion, pressing the 3D button to select input control, and just moving the switch that you'd like to use. I'm going to use the SJ switch in this example. So now this is a symmetrical mix or symmetrical sequence. It's going to run one direction. Uh, with one switch direction, it's going to run back the opposite direction when I change that switch position. I'm going to go ahead and assign that now by going into the advanced portion of the menu, scrolling down to my overwrite channel, and in this case we're going to go ahead and assign that to our door servo that we're using on our board. So you, now you'll see when I flip my switch that it's going to be assigned to my sequence and it's going to operate my my door servo in that position. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we uh, assign that correctly to, to a servo output that's active. And we want to make sure that it's only assigned to that particular thing. So what we can do is let me go up here. I'm going to go up and unselect or unassign my Q1 so that it's no longer involved in that mix. And we'll go ahead and move our Q4 switch. You'll notice the servo responds to that input. And that's a, about half movement that we prescribed for Q4. Now, if we were going to create an actual sequence involving that, what we want to do is go ahead and add more time intervals. So we're going to highlight the line, go to time, put our time intervals anywhere we want to. You can put as many intervals in the graph as you need to. And for each of those, you can prescribe its own value. And, and of course, if you want to remove a point, let's say that our point at three seconds was a mistake. We use the scroll wheel to go back and highlight that point. We hit the X, and it will clear that point from our sequence. We can then use the scroll wheel, go to any point along the graph, and re-enter a point in. So now we've kind of changed uh, the layout. And of course, you can go into any of your time intervals and it change the value. You just have to make sure that you're on the correct time interval and that you highlight the value and change that. So, of course, we'll run through that sequence and you'll see that that moves along with the graph on the transmitter. We flip the switch back. It's going to travel back along that prescribed path. So let's say that uh, I needed that operation uh, to be two separate sequence of events in two separate switch positions. So what we want to do is we want to go into our advanced settings. We want to change it to an asymmetrical sequence. So I'll change that to asymmetrical. So now when I go ahead and click OK, we go back to our graph. You'll notice that there's nothing listed for the sequence. Uh, in the second switch position, our original sequence is there. In the new switch position, there's no sequence. So part of the, the one of the things you want to do, of course, is you want to work backwards from your first sequence. So we know we finished at a positive value of 100%. So we'll go ahead and create our first time interval at 100%. Uh, now as we pass through from one side of the switch to the other, it should match. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of values in here. Uh, we'll add some points along the graph. And we'll uh, prescribe it some movement. So let's go ahead and give that full negative value. Once we've given each of these a value, I'll go ahead and run that sequence. I'm going to go ahead and reassign my four or my uh, second point of value other than what it has so that we can get a, some unique movement. So now I'm going to go ahead and operate the sequence. You'll see that in the original sequence, 
the servo moves along a prescribed path and stops. When I go back the other way, you'll see it stays in that position, then tracks a new path back to its, its beginning position. So what we've done is now we've created a sequence for our doors. Um, what you have to do is build that sequence to match what you're doing. If you're using something like a set of electric gear, make sure you give time uh, for the gear to operate fully. One of the things I had to do in building this sequence was modify my gear door servo a couple of times uh, to allow for the delay that's naturally built into my electric retracts. Uh, so that's one of the things as you're setting things up, you may want to limit your gear door operation to just that single operation. Uh, so basically leave it in a position where it just stays open or create that part of the process after you've already created the uh, process for the, for the gear. And to give you an idea what I mean by that, I'm gonna go ahead and go up into one of my gear. I'm gonna go ahead and operate that. And you can see based on how the bar moves, how that time schedule affects where the gear actually travels to. So, sorry about that. We hit the, the switch for our, our new mix. So we'll go back to the original gear sequencer. And you'll see that although that we had a point at one second where we started that increase to 100%, the gear didn't actually operate until we got to 100%. Uh, so that means that we need to take that bit of time into consideration. So if it began closing at two seconds and it takes about seven tenths of a second for that gear to close, our point must be later than three seconds before we try to bring that door closed. Uh, it's a rough way to, to describe it, but it gives you a small idea. If you guys watch through this, try to do what we've done here. If you get hung up on it or have any questions, don't hesitate to email us at sales at Esprit Tech or reach out to us either at Esprit Tech or Jetty USA. I'm James and we'll see you next time.